Today on The Breakfast, National Executive Council of the All Progressives Congress, APC, packs 100 million naira as the cost for its 2023 presidential aspirant to obtain form, sparking mixed reactions among Nigerians. Bandits kill three, abduct several in simultaneous attacks in distant Rimi community of Katsina. Sports update, Manchester United appoint Ajax boss Eric Ten Hag as new manager to replace interim Ralph Rangnick at the end of the season. What lies ahead for the club? And as always, we'll be reviewing the biggest stories making the headlines across the national dailies. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. This is The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadone. I am Messi Bopo. It's good to have you join us this morning. Yes, it's Friday and we are thanking God as always. Uh, and uh, I'm sure lots of people have great plans uh, for the weekend. And uh, Messi is doing something great this weekend, right? You're sleeping, you're resting. I'm you're sleeping. going to the beach. <laughs> That's something sleeping. great. <laughs> for me, I'll be going for a wedding. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> All the best. What to say? <laughs> All right, let's just slide into what's uh, trending. The wife of the president, Aisha Buhari, is in the news. And this time around, she has invited the presidential aspirants to break fast. That's iftar. Messi, this is something good, right? And uh, from what we are here, the aspirants uh, who are supposed to come are not supposed to come with their mobile phones, except for Vice President Yemi Oshibajo and, uh, right? Why are you going like that? Be because, I don't <laughs> because I don't know what's going on. I don't even understand what's happening in the country. But uh, the truth is, this has also generated a lot of conversation in different mm -hmm. spaces, and that's why we're talking about it. Uh, some persons have said, what is really going on? And they know that some persons will not. So uh, there's been a comparison. They say it's protocol. It is protocol that when you have the president or you have uh, the vice president and you have, you know, maybe the first lady. I really don't know where that's written. I can't categorically say because I'm not in Asso Rock. So mm. I don't understand the happenings and the doings, you know, in the presidency. But of course, it's been stated that um, if, you, if you have, I mean, if the president or the vice president or any other person was going to be hosting uh, personalities, then they're not expected to come in with their mobile devices, right? But one would say if you're asking, uh, that's, that's because um, it's an event that's going to have a lot of persons come in. Mm. I, I really don't know what's the rationale behind not having, you know, mobile devices around because it's the wife of the president. But some people are saying that there's a political undertone to all of this. Mm. Uh, it's just a disguise. If you remember, it's in public space. The wife of the president has not been very available in the no, Nigerian space. Hasn't. As a matter of fact, there are some quarters that have reported that the wife of the president has relocated from Nigeria <laughs> since 2017. And that's, and that's it. No, you need to go check that. You <laughs> know. They, these are some of the reports. That she's not been in Nigeria since 2017. And she usually just um, shows up. She had relocated with some of her children. <laughs> she doesn't live in Nigeria. I really don't understand, but but it's okay. It's not like there's anywhere in the constitution that would say the wife of the president shouldn't. But I mean, one would just expect that if your husband is the president, then you should be, um, but beside your husband. Where else can you be? The, 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 your the constitution country. does not make any provisional. I mean, there's no provision for the office of the of the first lady. Or, no, there isn't. Yes, there's no constitutional provision for that, but. Uh, by virtue of being the wife of the president. Yes, I mean, morally, it's just, you have to be here. You are the first I don't know, woman You know, this moral nation. conversation doesn't <laughs> always lead us anywhere. So right now, with yeah. this particular one, I'm really surprised. For me, I'm asking, why would the wife of the president um, invite presidential aspirant, really? Mm. What yeah, is she wants to have um, um, a tea a tea with them so that they could actually, why? you know, Drive a conversation of a maybe unity. Uh, why? <laughs> you ask me is why? <laughs> Am I her spokesperson? <laughs> So, oh, so, oh, so oh, I mean, these, are, these are some of the questions that I'm asking. I mean, yeah, it's been, maybe it's they, been a lot of thinking. They talk about state for. of the nation, the polity, you know. Uh, uh, in what capacity? 
in what capacity? If, if, you're, talking about, if you're talking about breaking the fast, if you look at the activity surrounding it, mm. it's a very spiritual activity. One of course, would be thinking the, that the, it should uh, be... Of course. You know, most times uh, when they break fast, uh, they just uh, they pray to break the fast after a long um, time of without um, food and all of that. You know, but... Uh, on the sidelines, uh, you could actually uh, talk about what's going on in the country. Nothing stops you from talking about that. So, it's, Mercy, so they for me, just, I'm trying to they're, they're going, they're going to the talk, since, uh, for, From what we understand, uh, let, let me even just read that uh, the people who have indicated interest so you understand what would eventually fall out from there. <laughs> so far, those who have indicated interest to contest uh, uh, the 2023 presidential election are the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, uh, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, uh, the All Progressives Congress National Leader, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, uh, former Governor of Anambra State, Peter and former president of the Nigerian Senate and in Paris, and in Ambukola Saraki, then Nelson Wiki, David Umai. You know, we have like a blend of um, Christians and Muslims. Of course, the Christians. So, so yes, it's, it's a combination not, of everything. Now, percent. with the restriction on the mobile phones, do you also expect the vice president not to come in with his phone? No, no, the vice president is actually um, exempted, exempted from that. Yes, the former is. president, how about the former president? Don't ask me that. I, <laughs> didn't, make, I didn't get the memo. I didn't, <laughs> yeah, I didn't make the There's been a lot of conversation <laughs> whether the former president, I mean, the former vice president, mm, to be Atiku precise, Atiku Abubakar, would be present there. Yeah, he would. Uh, are you sure? Fingers <laughs> across. I mean, I'm very interested. Okay, from what, from, what, from what was gathered, uh, it will not apply to uh, President uh, of Vice President uh, Yemi Oshibajo, uh, governors and ministers as well. Mm. So mm. every other person, <laughs> including the former Vice President, <laughs> which a lot of persons have queried. I mean, some people are saying they're really they're not sure if mm. um, the former Vice President would be in attendance, but. Uh, we're going to be monitoring yeah, and we will observing monitor and follow uh, this on that event. Story. And of course, we'll bring you up to date, up to speed with what will be happening as it actually happens. But I'm, I'm really interested. I wish I could be part of that meeting. Mm. Just not very So if, if you went in there, you go with some spy camera or something that could record. Why are you trying to <laughs> blow my cover? <laughs> Are you, 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 you said you're finding it interesting and not allowing you to use your mobile device. I'm sure you look for some spy gadget. So you, you, know? you have blown my cover. And no longer a mission, so it's cancelled. So, so when you're talking, you'll come with your receipts, Abby. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, also, the former president of Nigeria, Chief Olusha Gobasanjo, is in the news. And this time around, he is calling for state police. And he is actually bothered about uh, the issues of uh, the speed of insecurity in the country. And he is calling for state uh, police. And this is not the first time the issue of state policing you know, has actually taken uh, front burner. This time around, it is being renewed. Mercy. State policing, a lot of people have actually uh, said one or two things concerning state policing, uh, how it might be um, abused by the state governor, but other people are saying that if it's actually in place, uh, the people, the residents will be able to actually take uh, this uh, issue of security, you know, like they own it, like their own, and they'll be able to even monitor uh, police themselves better. No, so, so you're very correct because the argument that has been put against the use of or acceptance of state police is that um, we're not ripe for it. That's, that's the argument. Mm. Now, you have the school of thoughts who say that if you look at the First and Second Republic, that the, the state police um, at the time was used as an instrument of terror mm. by opponents. So in the First and Second Republic, and, and as such, we're not re ripe and ready for it. Now, you also have this school of thought still saying that the state police will not be able to handle the issue of terrorism. And uh, that's also another argument that's been put out um, by uh, these persons who are arguing against it. But if you, if, you, if we, you remember that we had a conversation yesterday, and in the course of this conversation, or within the week, we had talked about some of our guests have talked about um, having practicing federalism. I like not to use the word true federalism because there's nothing like true federalism. <laughs> no, it's, because, it's a Nigerian it's because, thing, you know. You know, it came um, up because we see we are practicing federalism in the country. At the end of the day, whether it's true or <laughs> <laughs> so, it's because we're not practicing federalism. So that's why, that's the why true came. <laughs> you have the concept, and the and the concept yeah. feels like it's just within our political you know, sphere, uh, mm -hmm. we're the ones that coined this word true, true federalism, federalism. <laughs> right? So mm -hmm. 
well, it's true federalism. Federalism is federal. We're not practicing it, and that's why Let's you're be having real with ourselves. So, but if Let you look at it, that. if you look at the components of it, if you look at the characteristics of a federal uh, system of government, then you understand that we're far from it. Very, and we're very far not from it. doing what it is. But you see, for all of those persons who have made these excuses um, against the practice, there's no system, there's nothing entirely that's actually perfect or doesn't have, um, you know, their flaws. So, it, it, because you can't actually want to wake up and say um, state policing is absolutely, you know, the perfect, the solution. perfect, you know, solution. And you can also not say that state policing is not the perfect solution. So, like I would say, there's no theory, there's no system you know, that's no, actually my, perfect. My, my, my but thoughts. if we continue under mm -hmm. this guise, we mm -hmm. will never get any results. So what so we stops have us from trying? Start. Maybe just jump into the uh, test the waters as it were. It's not a matter of even testing the waters. Okay. It's a matter of the fact. It's a matter of we not having strong institutions. Now, if you look at the argument that you know governors would actually take advantage of these police officers or use the state instrument mm -hmm. to begin to you know, carry out their interests and what have you, um, as has cited in the First and the Second Republic, you will find out that in the system as ours, we have strongly, um, we have a system where we have more strong persons rather than strong institutions. Mm -hmm. Those institutions are not strong. So we have weak institutions, and that's why you have an individual so powerful that they can control the institution. So if we get to a point where we have these institutions that are very strong, and these institutions are not just operated by spirit, they're operated by human beings. Mm. So you have structures that are, don't operate in space, but are operated by persons. And so we need to get to a point where we have strong institutions. We can't constantly make all of these excuses. First of all, we're not a federating unit. It's in the books. That's what we are. But we say it in the in Constitution, practice, that's, but that's in practice, a, we're far a from it. A federal uh, republic of Nigeria, are we a federating unit? Because if we are, the issue of state policing, and that's of what Nigeria. I'm saying is just in the books and, <laughs> and not in, a, you know, in its real sense. And why are we afraid of this? It's because we're not afraid of you know, um, challenging what it is. We have actually decided to build strong men. Strong. Why would a governor have a control? I mean, would have control over it, um, you know, no, the, the institution. Is you, you Why would people be, be stronger be than institutions in the constitution? You know, these things will need constitutional review over time. You know, because uh, the issue of our governors uh, being in charge, if the constitution, although most times uh, the laws actually are not being implemented, uh, we know all these laws uh, that we have in Nigeria. But most times, the implementation is another issue. We could actually walk around that, review the constitution and the workings of the state policing. The United States of America that we try to follow, you know, they are actually practicing in quote, true federalism. Uh, the they're practicing federalism. <laughs> You know, they are police, you know, they have state uh, police departments across, you know, in as much as they do that, but they still have the federal police as well. But, uh, you know, the federal police only comes in in situation, you know, that is above um, the state, you know, but general crimes and everything is done on the state level. And they've been doing well. I think we should actually just uh, dive into it head on, if you ask me. Because at the end of the day, it would be that you would have people who understand the terrain, mm. who understand you would use the local men, mm -hmm. uh, the people around, you know, to police the community. And that's mm. what it is. Not the fact that you would have to. And then another argument that's been put out is the fact that resources. Mm -hmm. uh, we're still grappling. We have a number of states that have not been able to pay the minimum wage. And so the argument also would be, will states be able to foot the bills would they be able to pay salaries but if have, we practice they have to challenge themselves and try to it, it's not a matter of challenge there revenues. are a lot of states that are sitting on resources and yes, that are my, not being tapped because my of point the, exactly. because of the fact that you because know because they, go, not they go you know cap in hand um, every so month to fact it's really sad know, to get their allocation we have gone through a, a the process same, of the, the constitutional same review stuff um, we in, talk about in 2022 all the time. and you know the part of um this particular part has not been taken care of. Mm. The issue of having states being self-sufficient and sorting out their issues. Because it would make everybody sit up. And the idea of everyone They should borrow a leave from Lagos state government because over time, you know, Lagos, the way the policing or security system has been so decentralized, uh, you, you find out that um, almost everyone has you know, a role to play. There's uh, the network uh, neighborhood security watch. We have um, the OPC. Somehow, there's a state, we have the vigilante groups. And uh, the Lagos state, there's a security trust fund, you know, which helps you know, to no, form so the police. No, so all of these states, I mean, if you look at the constitution, it gives right to governors to even speak to the commissioner of police. Mm -hmm. Usually, the argument is you Do have governors saying that they have to speak to in the charge IG of... Uh, 
um, we're not in charge of the security architecture, but it's within the ambience, it's within the discretion of the commissioner, please, to decipher whether or not what the governor has actually said is within justice. I mean, so to yeah. some end, they still have that control, but the constitution, I mean, it's not an you know, it's not exclusive. It's not that they have this power entirely. So um, the, the CP would still have to decipher whether this is right or wrong. And he has to also and report so to the, the IG. The, 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 um, the, the, the concept about, you know, governors not being entirely in charge is not um, really, 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 really um, true. Because mm -hmm. to some extent, they have uh, some control, but not entire control. And that's where the argument is. But we're saying that if we're a federating unit, what stops us from being a federating unit? What stops us from being a federal government? Where well, well, you don't have states do uh, controlling their resources, yes. and you have you know, them controlling, uh, having state police where they can actually handle the issue. And like you have mentioned, if you need the consent of the federal government, yes. in cases they can handle, the FBI. then you can yeah. have the federal government come mm. All right, so that's um, all for Top Trending uh, right now. We'll take a quick break and uh, we'll be going straight to Off the Press in a moment where we will be reviewing the front pages of major dailies in a moment to join us again. <laughs> 